guys welcome back to the channel I'm Bind and today we're gonna have some fun painting an image only in MS Paint which I have never done and in the process going up against some AI artwork so let me explain guys here's the deal there's this guy uh, Jason M Allen who won a fine art competition in the state of Colorado in 2022 using only Midjourney. So after he won, all hell broke loose basically and everybody was complaining about this guy and how they should not have given him first place in this competition being that, well, reasoning uh, basically um, that uh, it's not real art and all of that jazz we talked about this before so not getting into that right now anyways i wanted to do uh, an ms paint only image recently i th thought it's kind of fun because sometimes i like to restrain myself and you cannot restrain yourself much more than using only ms paint because nothing goes in ms paint and all everybody who tried this knows that okay so i thought what should I paint in MS Paint? Um, yeah, I could resort to a landscape or uh, some sci-fi stuff that I usually do. But then this artwork came across. So showing right now, this is the artwork in question, right? You can clearly see everybody, even blind people can see it's AI generated. Some of like the earlier um, generation. So. Um, and I thought, why do I not take this image as a direct source of inspiration, something that I tell my students not to do? <laughs> and that is because um, I think, in general, you should not take uh, pieces uh, of an exhibition like number ones or really great pieces that are done to perfection as an inspiration because chances are you cannot outdo them. They're already perfect. There's not a lot for you to interpret there. Not the case with this piece, because in typical AI fashion, it is not very defined and not very um, concrete in its uh, shape, design and content language, right? So this guy, interesting fact, he tried to copyright his own image, well, debatably his own image right and failed miserably so uh, in 2023 uh, he was denied copyright to his image however had he not been denied the copyright of course i can still look at that image like any artist can look at anything they want and then just get inspired and do another piece that is similar there is no rule there is no law against this. It's not copying anything. This is how art usually works. If you're doing it from scratch, you can take inspiration wherever you want. So, uh, if you have watched my stuff, you know that I'm a big no ref guy, which means I uh, don't like to take that much reference uh, because I think that it always influences me too much. So. Uh, but in this case, I'll make an exception <laughs> and do some art in MS Paint. So without further ado, let's get into a canvas in MS Paint. So guys, I pulled up the image here and I pulled up MS Paint. <laughs> and um, so uh, how is this going to work? I hear you ask. Well. I made a canvas and uh, what I did is I made sure that it's the same ratio as the original image so that we can uh, have a comparison. So um, the goal here is not to copy the image. The goal is to um, do a new image that utilizes the same composition as this image and ideally the same colors. Uh, but of course it's going to be a different interpretation first being that it's MS paint and then second being that I'm a human and I like to make sense of some of the shapes that don't make sense in this image right so 
Um, just let me quickly clarify something here that I'm not against uh, art. Um, how would you say this? Um, shapes that don't make sense or surrealism. Uh, love it actually, and um, this is not about uh, being um, being unconcrete with your content. There's great art that does that, so that is not um, that is not a thing. Don't think for a second that I'm bashing uh, AI art because of that. That is not uh, the reason, right? Um, so um, this is the aspect ratio. And, uh, well, one, one thing is that I had, had to make the canvas pretty small in pixels because uh, I tinkered around with MS Paint for just the half an hour just to be make sure that this can be done at all, right? So th here's the problem with that, uh, is that you can only scale these two uh, integer values like 25% and 100%. Uh, if you overscale it, it will uh, make some uh, brushes look really bad. Um, also, the brushes itself, they have a maximum that is not very, not very big. I like to use big brushes, therefore I cannot make this canvas like uh, an insane resolution. It would not make sense, right? So that's why we're doing like, it's almost like a huge, huge um, a pixel art. Like it's not even um, 4K or anything, but that is not the point here. Point here is to make this possible and uh, to make an interesting uh, comparison later so yeah let's see what we can do so first of all the stylus here i will not put it to use right away i'll do with the mouse for now because the first thing we have to do is block out some shapes so also i'm treating this uh i'm pretty much like um, a thumbnail at first uh, until i have all the shapes that i need so um very quick reminder for you guys, if you don't know, there's no layers in paint, there's no transparency, there is no pen pressure sensitivity, there is basically no color grading, no hue slider, no change of colors in any way, no lasso tool in the traditional sense. Uh, no copy pasting no nothing okay so that is that is why some people do this as a challenge right okay so which is why i need to treat this pretty much like a very traditional approach i have to work like on a traditional canvas because there is no layers there's no yeah you can undo that's what you can do but that's that's about it okay so uh i um I found out that, uh, first of all, yeah, we have to um, get some colors. These colors are not from the painting, obviously, so we'll have to reestablish uh, some colors here. So first I need something like uh, a dark green, I guess. What am I doing? I need to be... So... Also, color choices <laughs> is this bullshit here, which I really hate. Um, I prefer HSB. Um, see uh, the whole tone um, distribution here. That is not possible. It's the only thing you get. So therefore, we'll have to do. Um, so first, let's get some desaturated tones here in the back. Yeah, something like that. And then um, we start by blocking in some basic shapes. Um, see, see what we're getting. So guys, I decided to spare you with this part because um, uh, I really had to learn uh, how to use those shapes first and uh, in the process was not very talkative so uh, I think it's better that way uh, anyhow you can see how the basic composition now emerges and um, it's really finally the best way to just block in a lot of rectangular shapes and that way 
um, have a starting point at all to then later paint over it which is uh, basically all you can do paint over stuff right so the most important structures should appear here and the most important tones as well and theoretically you can paint the whole image just with this technique it will just not well uh, have pixelated borders not look very good but you can see that it's, it starts to make sense uh, slowly right slowly slowly we're getting somewhere with the um, basic colors here um. that's the yeah golden stuff that's yeah, good I like that so let's see in terms of um brushes there's um not a lot of choices of course there's just the hard round which yeah is just like that and then of course there is um only one brush that has transparency at all can't do that okay <laughs> wow that's insane right so yeah only one brush with some transparency which i will take it's better than not nothing right but that's going to be tedious so I'm making this uh, like um, um, an experimental style for that reason right so we'll see so what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to do a little bit of concentrating because you could tell that it is really not um, uh, going uh, very fast so I'll do a little bit more and then get back to you in a second so here is now where the brushwork starts because um i figured out that shapes will only only bring you so far right and um, now what i still have to do establish the rest of the color palette so that means i have to use the color picker quite a lot and just select the colors on site and as you can already see the colors are not exactly the same as in the ref and that is also i think perfectly fine because as i said before we don't just want to copy the image eventually we will do away with it and then uh, just uh, do our own thing from what is already there so unfortunately as everything in ms paint this uh, color picking process is very tedious and you cannot compare you cannot import the image or anything it is purely by sight and that is a good skill to have to be able to really see the colors and a lot of beginners cannot successfully do this so already you see that some changes are manifesting as i go uh, like the big round structure uh, in my case is clearly a window and then I have started to put some symmetrical um, patterns above they, now you can see them form better so there's the deviation and then there's of course um, other deviations from from the source um, and that of course is intended and also unavoidable since we cannot just since uh, MS Paint is such a um, um, simple program that really doesn't allow for uh, 
most stuff that um, Photoshop provides, right? So, yeah, I I found out that there's mainly two brushes I like to use, which is uh, a, a one the brush that has transparency to it. Um, that is just a hard brush, and unfortunately, it causes pixelation. But what can you do, right? So this is what I'm using here for the most part. And then later on, we'll see a more painterly brush that I use to blend a little bit, as much as that is possible. Because there is no real blender here other than um, a paint brush that just spams pixels. So if you don't want the pixelated look, which I decided I will not have that here, um, because it doesn't go really well with the theme I... Uh, I found so uh, I yeah did not use it at all so mostly using two brushes here for the entirety of the process plus later on you will see or already you have seen also some line tool the line tool is pretty handy if you want to correct or straighten out some structures that um, yeah there is no way of holding shift and painting in MS paint so that is uh, the only way to be uh, sure that you're painting straight or that you're setting up your horizon or your planes straight. So uh, this is starting to look like something now and that is because the color palette uh, is coming together in a way that uh, really um, very soon we'll just be able to pick color from the image and then continue like that in a more I would say more intuitive fashion so um, building up the painting until here I think was the most pain so far so guys uh, here is what we did so far um, you might have um, noticed that there was a little jump even in the time lapse that's because I forgot to record about 15 minutes and um, sorry for that but painting in MS Paint you really can't undo that and also I don't think it matters all that much so let's quickly go through what um, I've done so far we're 90 minutes in and uh, yeah I sped the process up a lot because that's really um, uh, I'm blocking in colors and uh, so far you might get the impression oh he, he's just copying the image right which is not <laughs> what is uh, happening but let me explain okay so um, let me do a quick um, draw over analysis here so um, basic composition right let me quickly shave here Eh. Is this working at all? You can't can't tell because it's so fast. <laughs> okay, so what we did is uh, round structure remains the same. A character remains the same. Remains um, pretty much the same. Um, however, uh, so um, for now, uh, I pretty much uh, I did block in a lot of the colors. Uh, and I did plug in the composition, which is basically floor, round shape, uh, and then uh, vertical shapes, right? So that's uh, what I did, minus uh, some um, of the more, um, how would you say that? Um, asymmetric shapes which I couldn't make sense of and probably don't make sense right so that's where we're at so the composition remains the same of course the idea remains the same uh, however uh, the original image is uh, a little bit uh, surreal because you can't quite tell what's going on is that a window uh, is that a look outside of the world which is what I'm doing right or is that just um, a sphere within a room because there's stuff overlapping the sphere right which I don't know uh, what that is supposed to mean right so um, 
of course in my version I want to make sense of things so I'm not doing that I have a clear vision which is that there is a wall and there is a, a, a circular opening and then you the main protagonist watches outside onto the world right which um, that is the feeling I got from the image maybe other people got other interpretations but yeah and then there's some stuff that it doesn't matter to me it looks like a wardrobe something like that I'm not really going with that um, I decided then to give it a little bit of uh, maybe a futuristic vibe over here also with um, the, those um, shapes being more I would say more symmetrical right so um, a little bit of a mixture here so and then there's the two side characters which are very important because here in the image they look alike right and which I kept that vision alive um, but uh, I made them even more similar because I think that makes sense uh, and then there's stuff that doesn't make sense to me like the bulge over here which I just uh, eliminated and also there's stuff that almost makes sense to me that I elaborated on which um, this you cannot quite see what the character is doing and in my version the character got a little desk to it and uh, I'm gonna give it a floating sphere of light there so to indicate there is some magic maybe some conjuring going on there right so it's a little bit of um, um, I'm giving this a little bit of a sci-fi touch here while the main theme is still um, yeah I would say baroque um, uh, yeah uh, epoch theme right so um, and then there's those um, openings to the hallway which could be an opening it's not quite clear here I'm making this much more clearer than uh, later on uh, I want this to be like a doorway I even want this to be a very different kind of a doorway which I think is interesting so up to now we're working in 50% and that is because um, I can't take any color so I, all the color I selected by eye right so it's not possible for me to 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 suck any color out of this right um, I could do that uh, maybe through a workaround but that would take forever and that is not the, that is not the um, the goal here the goal here is to interpret it by eye and then give it a twist and uh, deviate from the original material which I'm just about now 90 minutes in uh, I'm ready to do that because now I don't need the original image anymore so what I want to do now is um, get this up to a hundred percent and make this um and keep working on this in full screen this already looks pretty interesting uh, and i've done everything so far with pretty much the same um brush which is a a, a hard edged brush that builds one layer of transparency and the reason I chose that brush is because that is the only brush that is able to do transparency at all out of all of these brushes and I like the stuff that happens when you overlay here you cannot do it like in Photoshop or in any other painting program because the moment that you do more than one um, uh, repetition then it just clumps up and it will be the same color so that's why you saw me probably um, putting down single strokes a lot most of these are single strokes and this is where overlapping uh, happens also these strokes are not anti-aliased which is why you get some pixelation here uh, we'll see how this will work out later on but I don't care about that that's I think that even makes it interesting it's a it's a very authentic MS Paint style that way that it, it has no fancy uh, stuff going on so it's a very rough um, digital painting eventually so far this took longer than I thought I'm gonna be honest with you 
um, and that is because uh, in the in the beginning I was blocking in the shapes and then uh, transferring to the brushes that was more pleasant but blocking in the shapes is a pure nightmare because you have to make a selection then delete the selection and have your secondary color the color that you want to fill it with basically for it to work at all and then uh, you have to delete the the part that you cut out every single time so um, that is that is quite painful and uh, which is why I switched uh, at a certain point to doing only brushwork deleting in any way is simply impossible here you have to just paint over all the mistakes right there is no deleting there's no yeah you have uh, you can step back that is pretty handy i have to admit because that is the only thing that helps this from yeah getting even worse um time investment wise that is so um I will have to do a lot more, of course, guys, and uh, I will do this via time lapse and commentary. Forgive me for that, but I think um, this will be, from now on, this will be more pleasant to watch because we're doing, on second, doing away with this, and we're basically switching to full screen. And then, not quite full screen, <laughs> we'll do it like this. Because um, the pixels I counted is pretty much that is 100%, as you can see here clearly. So from now on, we're working on 100%. So you can see much better what's going on. Uh, also, the other part was pretty fast, but I don't think that matters at this point. Because this is, I think, now very interesting um stuff is happening because now i'm trying to really make this an image forgetting about the inspiration right which in this rough state i think it's a good place to to get rid of the the original inspiration or the ref for that matter whatever your ref may be right you can then just get rid of it at one point you feel that you establish the tones and what you really want from the image now it's just a, a matter of making everything clearer better uh, adding some details and then maybe even adding some stuff that was not uh, that uh, is additional like in my case this uh, maybe cyberpunk hallway entrance or this the sphere which might as well be like a, a robot uh, thing and maybe I'm even changing the clothes a little bit uh, later on, putting some light sources, which is a pain because, of course, you have to paint all the light effects. Uh, you cannot just do transparency, blending, all of the other tricks that I'm usually showing you in Photoshop, not possible in here. So, yeah, let's see uh, where we're ending up at. See you in a bit. So, yeah, I do pull the canvas in the middle here so that uh, we have a really a nice uh, cutout and can see um, what's happening now it's a lot better now to view because uh, I went to 100% of pixels so that is the max quality basically of the painting and uh, usually that would be way too little pixels but as I said it before, if you increase uh, canvas size, your brush size does not increase. So you have tiny brushes on a huge canvas and that is a, a huge pain in the ass. So I, I could not bring myself to do this, which is why these uh, pixels have to suffice. So now we're doing a little bit more detail work. And the process is still sped up like crazy, but that is because the whole picking... Uh, of colors and of the brushes it all needs to be done by mouse there is no hotkeys for that in any fashion so half the time i'm basically manually selecting the eyedropper tool which is um, not something that i was hoping to do <laughs> as much to be honest with you so anyways this um i'm now thinking more about the content because the ref is gone and there will be five more hours of painting. Of course, in time-lapse, that will only be 
like um, 10 minutes or so. Uh, but just be aware that this is really, I think, in total a seven and a half hour process. Um, yeah, which of course it does not look it in the end, but that is just the nature of these MS paintings, uh, MS paint paintings, right? So now I'm bringing new stuff. I'm uh, cutting the structure that uh, contains the window, and then I'm doing some little shading on the frame and uh, making that floor better so now there comes the other brush which uh, does um, has a more painterly look to it and it can do a little bit of blending when you put it down uh, unfortunately it's still too little transparency for my taste so it's really hard to do everything that is a gradient or that is a soft um, reflection style like uh, you have it on the floor that you will see that this takes uh, quite some time to do so the more um, geometric shapes uh, on the other hand are more forgiving in this program because you have a lot of shapes that you can just spam and you have some brushes that have hard edge to it so that works pretty okay But yeah, if this was just Photoshop, it would be kind of pointless to do this whole experiment, right? Uh, and as I said, uh, I'm probably slower than uh, expert MS Paint painters because I never done this. I never used MS Paint for uh, painting like this at all. Um, so I had to basically figure it out as I went along. Which, on the other hand, is not that complicated. And what you then basically do and what you see me doing now is I'm trying to use all the tricks that are in the back of my head of like graphic design and how different uh, programs work to try to exploit this, the brushes as much as possible to get the look that I want. Uh, and at the same time, always mind the restrictions and not try to do something that is simply impossible with the program, right? Which is kind of, yeah, it takes some experience to do. And even though I have no experience in MS Paint, I have experience in a lot of other programs. So that, that for sure helped a lot, right? So that structure on the left-hand side is just about to come together in a way that I for the first time felt like oh this is becoming a real painting and this is this is doing something so for a while there I was ready to call this a day um, and say okay you know what I'm not doing the next layer of detail I'm just done here and I will because the painting is complete right so you can always decide to stop but then I thought when I saw this appearing, um, these um, these two um, little doorways, or um, uh, yeah, one could be a mirror by 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 this um, um, part of the process. So then I I started feeling, you know what? I'm not I'm not giving up on this just now. I'll, let's see what I can do. So I ended up um, investing over three more hours into this uh, and then um, how would you say that my competition sense kicked in and I I really wanted to do it uh, see how much better I could do it without losing my mind uh, which is a thing that honestly can happen here because um, a lot of stuff is very repetitive if you pick the wrong color you're going to select the color picker again and again and again so yeah I cannot imagine how people do this that make a sport out of this and paint 50 hours one painting in MS paint like they are out there um, maybe you have seen that <laughs> it will not happen I will not uh, do this just for the record <laughs> but it is it is uh, it gives you some perspective to restrict yourself like that for sure so now what happens is I'm figuring out that this could be furniture because in the in the ref 
there was really just a blur of details which was very undefined and now once i figured out yeah i'll make this some uh, furniture and maybe some paravents and uh, stuff like this i start to like that uh, much more uh, what is happening there so you can get the impression that there is stuff in in the corner of um, of the room or on that wall and then now you can also have you also have the impression that finally you can look down uh, one of the doors which is also i think uh, a cool effect that was kind of there in the rough but not the same way that i did it here so now i'm thinking how to resolve the hardness of that round shape and for a while i thought i would keep it but the more and more the image got rendered the more it stuck out to me as being something that looks very artificial um, and then eventually i think we'll get rid of it so now there's line tool again which is also pretty handy because uh, i gave this a real perspective uh, with a real vanishing and on the horizon the horizon you cannot see it doesn't manifest but it is there slightly um, below the women's heads level i guess so that you can feel also from the window frame that there is actually perspective going on something that you cannot feel in the ref because there is no referencing of perspective in that uh, original image and it's also to be honest with you something that ai is always bad at uh, getting perspective right So now on the right hand side as well I put some structures with, which are not like that in in the ref and uh, I just and that's that's uh, very welcome for me because I really see no point in just uh, clinging to the ref too much and just trying to imitate that it's not what an interpretation should be right even in such a, a basic program so at one point we're making that stuff our own and you can already see that happening here we are far removed now from what was the ref and i'm just adding stuff and uh, yeah it's been now three hours since i last looked at the ref <laughs> so yeah i think uh we can start to feel and see that the picture is much brighter i think uh, also more colorful because you cannot just blend over colors to overlay like in photoshop which I love to do, but that makes it, ba it ma basically makes it so that the color palette that you blocked in in the beginning is the color palette that you ideally have to stick with because everything else will make you redraw everything in order to just be able to change the color, which obviously is something that is insane to do. It's just not efficient at all. So you basically overpainting everything just for a color change in this program but i think yeah the more colorful look is is also pretty okay here might have subdued it if i had the choice in photoshop a little bit make it a little bit more realistic but this i think it looks uh, it has its own appeal And now reflection becoming much better there's still one or two things that i need to take care of one being yeah what you see right now that woman being slightly too small uh, even if uh, we're um, taking that um, perspective vanishing in the room into consideration where like uh, the characters reside on on the floor uh, yeah, that woman is supposed to be smaller. It's standing further into the room, but not that much smaller. So this looks better, more natural, I would say. Also helps that uh, the character is more intersecting now with uh, the window. It's almost like a pendulum, which is really a great focal point here. Um, and then one other thing is that 
I yeah, I did not like what is outside the window. It was also too close to the ref for me in terms of shape, because this is like um, too much of a diagonal with without any um, justification. So I'm making this basically now just uh, something like a huge city, which is vague. But so you're in the imagine you're in the center of the city. You're looking out. You're seeing more of the city, and then just there's um yeah there's also the sky and you're looking outside the city um of course fan fantasy medieval style uh city um so I give it little details also changing color palette a little bit keeping this quite painterly because if you if you make it too concrete you you, you will not have solutions with those brushes uh, for everything right so there's a limitation of uh, how much it makes sense to render stuff. And this also has to do with the style. Uh, so I didn't now make everything better, but already I can feel that like the end is coming soon, maybe uh, within the next uh, hour or 90 minutes of painting, because then at a certain point you hit a level of detail that if you want now to make everything better, you need to spend so much more time just to make everything a little bit more uh, defined. You then need to spend like triple or uh, the time that you already spent, which then I was not will willing to do because uh, it was also starting to feel like, yeah, this it really should look um a little bit uh, unrefined to to uh, retain some charm i would say rather than look too clean because i think with that kind of a brushwork at at one point if you try to make it too smooth everything it it drifts towards being worse and that is uh, not what happened here but it's also i think i felt that point coming so, and so i I made myself stop at, at one point. Uh, and then now I'm just asking myself, what is really missing? What do I absolutely want? And one thing is to break that round structure, which I already did here. And then uh, add a glimpse of more detail up there, like those strokes, right? To just give an impression that there's something going on on the ceiling, in the shadow, in the corner maybe. Uh, and then uh, s resolve some more of uh, the right lower part, which um, I did not address for a really long time. And just trying to create some interesting stuff that um, is maybe not 100% concrete, but it, it could be devices and uh, certain uh, objects that uh, Yes, of course, are open to interpretations, but at least you can see where there is uh, a three-dimensional object um, going on, and then the light hits it, and uh, that's uh, that's uh, always a nice look. Yeah, so resolving that edge, and then I think. Uh, yeah, you can spend like 20 hours just on that floor. If you really want to make it better and better and better. And I, at one point, I just want to stylize the thing. And now the candle is coming. Uh, and then uh, go with this stylization and just be, have it be a more honest piece that is not trying to, too hard to be perfect. Because I think, as I said it before, at one point, stuff starts getting worse. Um, or you have to spend 50 hours, right? Which I was not honestly not willing to do at this point. I would rather make, uh, use that time to make five other videos for you guys, right? And for myself, of course. Um, yeah, finally, yeah, some thoughts about last little details thought yeah that was too harsh of a of a cut of that um 
floor up there uh, towards uh, the wall so I added some minor reflections there but apart from that I'm pretty pleased with how this now uh, looks so uh, we'll be done here uh, soon guys this has been a real chore so here's the final image let's have a look I mean you had the chance to have a look obviously the entire time but um, yeah um, I have to say don't try this at home <laughs> because you you might lose your mind right so uh, I have uh, as I said before I have a lot of experience in different programs and of course I did this for years and years and years so I was trying to maybe even though I never did an MS Paint painting do it uh, intuitively faster uh, than uh, would be um, possible for a lot of more inexperienced people that being said it still was fun in its own way right uh, I think we made a little point here of how you can change from the ref even though the program is not very capable and then end up with an image that it does yeah citate the ref in terms of composition and some colors but it's also its own image now and made it our own so that is something that I think is, is always cool to see. Uh, as I said in another video, even for an AI engine, there's infinite solutions for the same prompt. So never know what you get. And of course, if you give this to uh, a thousand human artists, you will always get something different. That is what makes it exciting and that uh, nobody can take away from you. So guys, here we are. Um, I hope you liked this fun little project um, going up against, well, I shouldn't say going up against because this was never meant to be a real competition. It's not an ego trip of me saying, oh yeah, look, uh, I, I'm, much, I'm so much better than AI even with MS Paint or some bullshit like that. Uh, it's all in good fun um, but I think you know that it's it's kind of a, almost ironic to have something that is so underdeveloped and so old and then utilize that to interpret something that is uh, in many ways considered to be the peak of technology right now uh, and then just see what happens right and in the end of course you have uh, this uh, yeah huge uh, um, discrepancy like uh, a gap between the result and and the ref and of course that's always the case but here it's very apparent like uh, where the limitation of the of the program lie and also limitation of time and also limitation of myself of course so i think that is um always nice to see an interpretation of something through a purely human lens which is really what that is right is only a guy with a couple of tools um, making something from the reference of something else so um, yeah hope you like the video hope you like the artwork too leave your comments down below um, and um, yeah talk to you soon in another video